The Midwest produced some unique tractors. The Illinois, the Wisconsin, and the Indiana like we've got in here today. You hardly ever see an Indiana. Today we've got three Indianas in the shop. They've all come in for the pre-30 auction and Dave's had them in here getting them tuned up and ready to go. Uh, you know what's interesting is we've got three Indiana tractors but they're all different. Uh, it's something that happened in early tractor development often uh, as, as they would produce a tractor and it would get out in the field and they'd find weak points or places to improve. Uh, it was almost like research and development on the assembly line. So we've actually got, uh, we've got two Indianas here that are about 300 serial numbers apart, uh, but there are several differences in them. The Indiana tractor started as the Star Tractor Company in 1917, and then in late 1918, it was actually bought out by the Indiana Silo Company, and, and it became the Indiana tractor. The first tractors that were produced by the Star Tractor Company actually had the words Star Tractor Company on the hubcap. Uh, but this star remained uh, on a lot of the Indiana hubcaps ex except for the very late ones like the Orchard Tractor that you'll see and it's got a smooth hubcap on it with no star. One thing that's unique about the, these three tractors is they all still have the original honeycomb radiator in them. You'll notice on the earlier Indiana tractors they've got a smooth radiator tank. Both of these tractors uh, are that way. When you move on to the later Indiana tractor, uh, after Indiana Silo bought it from Star, they actually impressed that top radiator tank uh, with, with the name Indiana Tractor. You've probably already noticed on the screen that this tractor is much shorter than the other two. Uh, the reason is this is an orchard tractor. So it was made lower so it would fit underneath the uh, tree limbs of the, of the uh, fruit trees. This is super rare, very, very rare. I don't, know, I don't know how many Indiana tractors are still in existence, but there's just a handful of the orchards. One selling point of the Indiana tractor to the farmer was that they could use their own implements uh, behind the tractor. So all of the horse-drawn implements uh, that they had uh, before they had they got the tractor, they could they could modify them to use on the Indiana. And Indiana sales literature actually touted this fact and said that they had never seen a horse-drawn implement that uh, couldn't be adapted to the Indiana tractor. There were a few implements that were designed specifically for the Indiana tractor, like on this one. That is an Oliver number 61 plow that was designed to specifically fit on the Indiana tractor. You can see the, uh, the brackets and, and the way that it fits, fits on there. So that, that is an extremely rare plow. It's very, very hard to find. In one testimonial in the Indiana literature, uh, there was a farmer that farmed 265 acres with eight horses and a large gas tractor. And when he bought the Indiana, he was able to sell three horses and the large gas tractor. So he was still farming 265 acres with one of these and five horses, which is a little hard to imagine. But the Indiana uh, uses a Leroy engine, a four cylinder Leroy engine. Uh, so they sound nice when they're driving. A uh, little bit of a challenge to uh, drive. You've got to get used to it with the sulky arrangement, but really neat tractors. And we've got three Indianas that are going to be on one auction on the pre-30. Hope you can tune in or, or better yet attend that auction and uh, you'll see these tractors driving around and operating.